finally. Finally, this project is close enough to being finished so that I can record this final video, the last hurrah. Of course, you know, it's not done. It will take a year or so for all of the little bits and pieces to fall in place and also for the house to generally grow in into the environment. But for all intents and purposes, the designing and the construction phase is complete. In this video, I'll guide you through the project at the state in which it's currently at. And I will try to highlight the more interesting aspects of this final stage. But first, a quick thank you to a sponsor for this video. This video is sponsored by Kuhom. Ready to bring your interior design visions to life? Meet Kuhom, the all-in-one 3D design platform revolutionizing how you create and visualize spaces. With Kuhom's powerful tools, you can design stunning interiors in just minutes. Whether you're an architect or an interior designer, the user-friendly interface makes it easy to create beautiful and detailed spaces. Plus, after all of the creating that you will do, you can turn your designs into photorealistic images that impress clients. Collaborate, share, and streamline your workflow at kuhom.com. Signing up is free, by the way. Thank you, Kuhom, for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's start with the exterior. The first thing to greet you as you approach the house is the fence, which is made out of cord and steel. And this can be found echoing throughout the perimeter of the house, you know, in small bits and pieces scattered here and there. And speaking of the perimeter, the cladding, that turned out great. It's made out of copper and it's going to get this kind of a nice greenish tint over the course of a year or so. Right now it's, you know, still a little bit too glossy. One thing that really sucks is that we couldn't save the tree during the construction of the house. The tree in the front. The root ball was too wide and too much of it got removed during the foundation work. But it is what it is, you know. A, a new tree will be planted in the same spot soon, but it would have been nice to save the old one. But with that being said, all of the old trees in the back of the site have been saved. And this provides very good shade to the lounge area for which a pit, um, how is it called? Pit style seating, a jacuzzi and an outdoor shower were designed. I'll get to that in just a second. I'll, I'll show you the project. Okay, let me guide you through the landscaping project because that is something that was done already when the building was built, you know, at least the, the, the main uh, form of the building was, you know, the concrete was there, right? Um, so it was done late and it was done in between videos so I didn't have a chance to actually present it to you, right? So this was something that was sent to the client for approval. So think of it as a proposal phase. We didn't even render the renders for it. We just did print screens because it, it, it was just faster and we could move on to the actual technical project, which, you know, is, is the important bit. So, you know, house with uh, all of the surface finishes already you know, in, in place and also surface finishes for the landscape proposed. Moving forward, the fence proposed and just print screens from different angles, you know, for the client to get the idea of what is it that we want to do. So in the back of the house, there is this kind of lounge area, the pit, the jacuzzi and the shower. Let's just find, yeah, this is a better angle for it. So the seat, seating, you know, just chilling out area, chilling out zone. Then you have the jacuzzi under the large tree that was saved and you have the shower area. And the whole thing here is protected or, or you know, made a little bit more private with proposed greenery from all sides, right? So that's basically it. that that's what you, uh, you know, what, what we pr proposed to the client. Um, and right next to it, there is this grill station area here that you already can see um, is, is finalized. It has been built, right? So once that this was approved, we moved on to creating the technical project and it consists of this um, site plan, you know, ju just a regular plan with different surface finishes and where the greenery is, where the pit is. So again, the seat seating area, the jacuzzi, the shower, and just the terrace, you know, for whatever. And then you have the driveway with the proposed tree, not proposed plant, 
tree that is going to you know, be instead of the tree that unfortunately has died during the construction phase. And then a little bit more of a uh, explanation of what's what and what's where. Um, all of the mm, retaining walls, yeah, all, all of the retaining walls are uh, showcased here, all of the measurements and so on. Examples for, let's zoom in here, of what kind of a steel we want, what kind of a rock we want, uh, that we want monolithic large scale rocks there, and then uh, if concrete has to be cast, then it should be cast with the uh, plank pattern, wooden plank pattern, kind of embedded in it, right? So, so the uh, the cast should show it. Then we have the lighting, right? All, all of the lighting fixtures. So you can see that the exterior ha does have quite a lot of lighting in it. Mostly, of course, of course, ground accent lights. As well as here and then we have our greenery right greenery with different types of shrubs and bushes and so on and all of the types of shrubs and bushes are listed here i will not even try to say the names of these in english i don't know the names of these in english but this is how they look like right so um you can kind of look which one is which according to the numbers right and then you have the facade for the fence right with all of the cons construction you know of, of how it should be constructed what's the step size and so on and then finally the maybe a more interesting bit for you for for the viewers um is the pit and the, uh, how this uh furniture piece concrete furniture piece was uh, showcased to the uh, contractor, uh, presented to the contractor so that the contractor could actually build it. And it was done through a series of 27 different sections, right? Like this. And you can see section between 5 and 21, between here and here. It's the same section, right? So so basically, the, we, we optimized this, this portion um, so so that it's a little bit easier to be made and it was done and uh, they, they casted it I'm not sure if I have any good pictures of it, but uh, I really hope I do uh, We'll see anyway, so that that's how you kind of prepare the, the file or prepare the working file for the landscaping portion of a project in Lithuania Right, let's move on and one more thing that was designed after the construction has begun was the driveway and its detailing I personally think that the large format tiles framed with cord and steel accents fits the building quite well. And that's, that's honestly it about the outside. I think it came out quite well compared to the initial concept. And what I mean by that is that the builders, they didn't, the contractors, they didn't steer away from what was proposed and what was drawn. And this is very important. All of the detailing and so on is exactly to the specifications of us, the, the architects. And now if we were to talk about the, the interior, this is, this is a little bit more tricky for me because this is something that I would like to show instead of tell, right? But I guess as I'm showing you videos and, and images and so on, I can talk a little bit, at least in the background. So let's start by talking about the surface materials such as wood, for example, that is laid out in the interior in the same rhythm of these 15 centimeters as is the exterior cladding as well as the fence. And of course the rhythm sometimes changes from 15 to 30 to 45 to 60 centimeters, but it always has this kind of a step size of 15 in it, right? So there is a little bit of connection between the outside, what's happening on the outside and the inside. And this connection kind of carries on and continues on with the color palette because that is also bringing in the surrounding nature in the interior. For example, the finish of the second uh, floor walls, it resembles sand dunes, right? Both in texture as well as in color. And this resemblance, you know, is due to the fact that the sand dunes are literally like a few minutes walk away from the property. 
also in regards to the color of the interior on colors chosen color palette you have the pine needles surrounding the site there's a lot of pines in the site and that same color is added in the interior through the use of stone right so you have this kind of connection between the inside and outside both through color palettes as well as through general rhythm of elements as well as the surface finish or surface irregularities I should also probably mention that the joints and the connections be between different elements, between different materials and so on, they are either hidden completely from the viewer, or if they are not hidden, then they are solved as a design object, right? Every single one of them. We're quite proud of that. So this project was unique in a way that it went by quite fast once we got the building permit. You know, and, and the building started and now here we are, it's already done. Um, while at the same time, us not really knowing if it's going to turn out well or not. And that is because different groups of contractors worked on the project without a proper project coordinator in place, right? So all of these constellations of different like electricians and furniture makers and so on, they worked without a single overseer, you know, being in the middle of all of it. And usually it's not the architect that, you know, this project coordinator, it's usually like the head contractor or whatever you call it. Project coordinator is what you call it, right? And this means that the building error, you know, that was made by one group of contractors would then need to be glazed over or, or fixed by the next group that you know comes in on the site so i guess a very simple example would be um you create an opening for a door right so you have contractors that do concrete work right and then you have uh, contractors that do spackle work right they, they even out the surfaces kind of and then you have contractors that come in and fit the door right actually people who manufacture the door the door hinge the door frame and so on right so if the people that do the evening out you know that the spackle layer if they do a poor job or if, if they mm, miscalculate right then they're not responsible for fixing it because they're already done they're, they're already left right it's the door people job to fix it you know so so the next contractor that comes in needs to fix it which doesn't sound like a huge problem except that it kind of becomes a problem once the door people say that we're not going to be fixing it right with that being said you know it, the, the client himself is experienced in construction so he managed to put everyone you know in, in their right place and uh, make sure that everything moves forward second thing in, in terms of issues or in terms of gripes that I have with the project is <laughs> there is a knock to open bridge and it doesn't have a handle so you can't open it manually I strongly believe that this is ridiculous but we'll give the client a few months before asking if they want the handle to be installed or not we'll see usually I write an outro to my videos just so that I can you know uh, sound good, I guess, <laughs> you know, but in this case, I didn't write an outro because it's still, I still don't feel like the building is finished, even though it, you know, it's, it's, it's there, you know, that there's no more, no more work for an architect to do, right? So the building is, is finished from our perspective, but it's still not done in my mind, right? So I'm not really writing an outro for this. One thing that I would urge you to do or, or suggest you do if you're interested in this project is um, go to verygoodarchitecturecompany.com. I will leave a link to it in the video description below and just bookmark it and then check up in a, in a year next summer because that's when we are going to actually get a photographer, you know, a professional cameraman in and he's going to take a bunch of pictures and we'll have like a proper publication of the building you know once it's actually settled in before that 
from the architect's perspective, as I said before, we're done from a creator's you know, perspective, it's still not finished. You know, it still needs to, it needs that final push. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.